Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercress, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play, or rather, a brand new old Let's Play. Let's play Inspector Gadget for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System again. This was one of the first Let's Plays that I ever did, and I played this alongside the old Let's Play, the first Let's Play that I did for the Super Nintendo version of Jurassic Park. This was the side Let's Play while Jurassic Park was the main one, and having a main and a side Let's Play was a thing that I rarely did. Matter of fact, I haven't done that since 2014. And... Back when I did this, I think this was like among the first seven Let's Plays that I ever did, and I had a long way to go when it came to making Let's Plays, and yet the original Let's Play of this was the first one to get a zillion views all of a sudden because of how I titled all of the all of the videos because I would be like let's play Inspector Gadget stage one of six and then the title like after that would be like three things about the stage and for some reason when I did the final stage I mentioned Dr. Claw's face in the title by saying Dr. Claw's face and for some reason that video became my most viewed video of all time. I'm not even kidding. I, I mean, it just got way up there in views all of a sudden and then it had like a few, it had a few hundred at first and if you had a few thousand and then there's like tens of thousands now. And Wow, these demos are terrible. Um, yeah. It got to the point where... Much later on, some French movie site called Allocine.fr used this in an article about Inspector Gadget. And it got a whole slew of views to my channel. Or more specifically, that one video, and did little else. So I've been talking about this for the last three and a half minutes now, and you can already tell by the demos in which Gadget is invincible and is moving around very, very poorly, that this is a 2D side-scroller that plays kind of like Castlevania, sort of. Well... As, as far as the power-ups go, at least. And you have to do Inspector Gadget things. Unlike the real Inspector Gadget we've seen in the cartoons and the movies, the way things go here, Inspector Gadget is going to be a lot more competent here as opposed to every other medium that he's been in because we're the ones who are controlling his every action. I've been talking long enough. Let's go. And the game starts by Mad Agents kidnapping Penny. As you can see, Penny Gadget here not being able to get away fast enough. The chief sees what's going on. And we see a note from Penny. Brain, Dr. Claw is after me. Tell Chief Quimby and help Uncle Gadget with his missions. Hurry, Brain. I don't know how much longer I can run. Well, given how that how quickly that guy was able to catch up with you, not very long. Also, is her real name, real last name, really Gadget? I'm not sure if that's ever been covered. I mean, I've seen the cartoon, but not a whole lot enough to remember it. Anyway, we are now in the kitchen of Inspector Gadget's home. And we get 
stages in the form of assignments from the chief. Be prepared to see a lot of grammatical errors in these little cutscenes. Here's your assignment, Gadget. No comma between assignment and gadget. Your niece Penny abducted by Dr. Claw. No period at the end. Reports of her being held in a haunted English castle. Well, that checks out. Must rescue Penny from Dr. Claw. I will let the lack of a space between Dr. and Claw slide. This message will self-destruct. Finally, a grammatically correct sentence. Right, Chief. I'm on my way. No comma after right. Chief is not capitalized. No period after Chief. And you press A to go through the dialogue. And of course, it always self-destructs in the Chief's face. Just like in the TV show. And now for stage one of six. So I'm going to pause the game real quick. You move left and right with the control pad. You can hold up to attack upwards. Holding down lets you not only duck, but you can also uncover hidden bricks that contain hidden power-ups. Pressing A lets you perform special abilities, which will require hats. They work pretty much like the hearts in the Castlevania games. B jumps, and Y is your regular attack. If you're standing still, you throw your punch forward. If you're crouching, you'll use the kick. And if you're in midair, you'll do a headbutt. And you have a little bit of range on them because there's a little... They're all on mechanical strings, basically. And you can use L and R on the, on the top of the controller, the L and R shoulder buttons, to switch gadgets even when the game is paused. And in the... At the top of the screen there, you have your currently equipped ability. You can carry up to three, and then after the three, the icon will flash, and if you press A while the currently equipped gadget is flashing, you'll be able to perform a special attack or function of some sort. To the right of that is the amount of hats that you have. They Again, they act like the hearts in the Castlevania games. You start with 20, but you can carry up to 9 carry up to 99 almost said 999 that didn't make any sense you have your amount of current amount of lives and your current amount of time you have 300 seconds to not only get through this whole section but also this whole level and if you run out of time you get sent back to the beginning of the current section that you are on I there is not much in this game in the way of checkpoints so be careful Anyway, let's do this. Let's punch these rocks. We can get some hats, and we can get the gloves this way. The gloves and the plungers that we start with, neither of them use any hats. The plungers can be used to climb up walls just by jumping from one plunger to the next, and you can have up to three in any given time, and the hat lets you grab on the hooks. Just like that. And we now have a flashing arrow, but it doesn't do much in the way of anything here. Maybe it lasts longer, I don't know. The blue copter. If you use that, you will be able to float and glide in midair. Just press A to use the blue copter. It, you, it does use hats, unlike the other two pirates that we've had. And you can use them, use it to get around. The arrow projectile that we just picked up, that allows you to attack enemies from a distance. And the suit power-up allows you to get an extra hit point. You have two hit points. If you get hit once, you lose your trench coat. And Gadget runs around in his underwear. If you get hit while Gadget is running around his underwear, you lose a life. You get sent back to the, to the beginning of the current section you are on. Now, if you take the bridge, Sunder will strike the brighter colored segments. If you go down here, though, let's hope I can do this. Yes, I can. Just grab a hook then gr in the center and get to the right. And if you jump to this thing by jumping on the red jumping board, 
and grab this spinning yellow square here, we can enter a bonus area where we can get an extra life and a ton of hats. Thankfully, time stops when you're in these areas so you can get yourself a breather. And I'm going to take a breather right now to drink some tea. Feel free to wait on me, Gadget. Okay. Jump on the big jumping board to get out. And by holding up and pressing Y, you can punch whatever's above you. Let's go to the right here and head to the next section. And let's get another one of these things, these little gold spinning plates, for even more hats. And we are now at the maximum number of hats. Let's get out of here. So these guys in the tree costumes, they rocket upwards. And if you can hit them, you can get some cool power-ups from them, which is kind of nice. Um, the picture of Brain increases the length of your Y button attacks. You can carry up to three, and if you die, you go back to the default minimum. That's a mini gadget icon that sends out miniature inspector gadget, which will walk towards enemies and attack them. Which is nice. Also, you can punch the rocks, but um, be careful if you do that. And I would like to punch at least one of these guys. Perfect. Because that way we can drop down here, take care of everyone else, and we can take a shortcut down here. And we can break everything around here for more power-ups. You can carry up the three of any kind of power-up, and the more of a power-up you have, the stronger it's going to be. Keep that in mind. And now we're going to wait here for the brain balloons. When they get to a certain elevation, they will pop, and you'll have to wait for another one. Now we have made it to the upper part of this castle. And, yeah, I have 167 seconds left. We can do this. Um, the purple guys, unlike the other mad agents in green and yellow that we've seen, they take two hits instead of one. Also, I forgot to mention the bomb power-up. The bomb lets you throw a bomb. Press A once to produce bomb. Press A again to throw it. That's how we blow that up. And I would like to get my hands on that. Now, if I head to the right, I should be able to get something. Hopefully. Yup. And here, we'll be able to get way more brain icons than we should. We can also get some hit points and extra lives. I'm now up to seven hit points. Seven lives already, which is pretty cool. And if you hold down... See those flickering blocks in the lower right-hand corner? We can punch those, attack those, to reveal them, and then attack them again to get whatever's inside, which is cool. I would like to do that. Speaking of which, we could have also found these things the same way. And I would like to drop down. Um, the mice do hurt you. Also, these little floor panels that are, like, above these pits, you don't want to walk on them or jump on them because they will spin around, they will topple over, and you will fall into them. And there's an extra hit point if you need one. Now jump into this empty portrait and you'll be able to enter the boss area. And what do you know, we got our 300 seconds back. That's nice of the game to give us our time back. Anyway, Dr. Claw shows up. He lights the candles on the chandelier there. And you need to avoid the mad agents that fall out of the ceiling as you keep attacking the chandelier. As you do this, you also want to avoid the flames that fly out of, from the candles. And eventually, you'll need, as you keep punching the chandelier, the candles will go out one by one. Once you extinguish all the candles, it won't be long until you destroy that chandelier boss. And you'll complete the first stage. 
Be careful. Mad agents are everywhere. Here. Not sure if there should be a semicolon or a period be after careful, but there's nothing there nevertheless. Let's read our next assignment. Penny being held in a Swiss clock tower. Rescue Penny from Dr. Claw. No period at the end. This message will self-destruct. Right, Chief. I'm on my way. Same as last time. No com after right. No period after Chief. Get used to seeing that sentence being written that way every single time. Boom. And it's on to stage two. Which I will handle in the next video. Just like with the original Let's Play, I will be playing one stage per video. Join me next time where I take on stage two, which I'm guessing takes place in Switzerland. Until then, this is Prince Watercrest. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!